Hello, happy Christmas. Chris here from The Naked Scientist. From time to time, we showcase here on our main Naked Scientist feed some of the other programmes that we make across our Naked network. And this week, we're bringing you the latest episode of the Naked Gaming podcast made by Chris Barrow and Lee Milner. If you like the programme and you'd like to subscribe, look up Naked Gaming podcast wherever you normally get your podcasts. It should be in all the main catalogues. Or you can go to nakedscientist.com slash gaming. There's a subscribe link at the top right of the screen and it takes you to all the details. It's also a very good month to listen, actually, because there's a free gift giveaway in this episode. Don't forget, meanwhile, that uh, we do have our donation fundraiser running at the moment and your support very much helps to keep our programmes on air. So if you enjoy what we do here at The Naked Scientist, do please consider becoming a regular supporter or even a one-off donor. Details of how you can do that safely and securely at nakedscientist.com slash donate. Chris and Lee, over to you. This is the Naked Gaming Podcast with Chris Barrow and Lee Milner. Can I just start off by saying we're now on Instagram. Hooray! Woo! You're in charge Thanks of uh, Instagram now, aren't you? Yep. So I'm in charge of Twitter. Okay. And you're in charge of Instagram. And let's just see who's got the most followers. At I've the... literally just let's started just, about just... three days ago. Me. I yeah, because I started three days ago. I'm the champion. How many followers do you have on Instagram? Me, personally? Yeah. Oh, oh, 200. Yeah. I haven't made a, yeah. basically a single post. Come back to me when you're nearly at 1,000. I will. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, last month on this here podcast, we heard about the latest Star Wars game called Squadrons. Um, not to boast, but I've personally played over two hours in one session in VR without any motion sickness issues. But two other people who I've showed it to have felt almost immediately ill, like within three or four minutes. You can download that episode right now. And November's been a very busy month. Mm. We're in another lockdown, by the way, in case you hadn't... In case you hadn't noticed. Noticed. Mm -hmm. Um, At least there are games to play, though. You've been playing Ori. Oh, so good. On the Switch. So good. Although it's on lots of different platforms. It's amazing. It's a very beautiful game where you run around and jump up and climb things. It's like a platformer, so that's really cool. But also a game called Until Dawn that you were recommended by your personal trainer, Marvin... Yeah. I why are you put, Why is there so much silence around well, it's the Until Dawn? I haven't actually told him what I think of it. I think now's a very... That's why I've avoided having a PT session today. Okay. What, because you didn't want to train with Marvin because then Until Dawn might have come up in conversation. Yeah. And what would you have yeah. said? What have we got coming up next? This month on the show... We'll cover the release of the ninth generation of consoles with the Xbox Series X and PlayStation 5, with some of the next generation releases, including Assassin's Creed Valhalla and Spider-Man Miles Morales. There's also Hyrule Warriors, Age of Calamity, and that go-karting thing, uh, Mario Kart Live <laughs> Home Circuit. Meow. Meow. So Mary has been racing, <laughs> uh, we've been racing, and it was actually quite a lot of fun. It's really good. Did you notice that three of those games all have colons in the title? Is, is this a new trend in gaming? Maybe Spider-Man, that's, Miles Morales. That is kind of fashionable to have a colon. Uh, <laughs> we'll start putting all of them like exclamation mark, question mark. I just laughed when you said fashionable to have a colon because it sounded like something else. Uh, I'll, <laughs> I'll be speaking to Carlos Rodriguez, by the way, later on in the podcast, Great known name. as uh, Ocelot, is his online handle. He's the founder of one of the biggest esports teams in the world, G2. Cristiano Ronaldo has been playing at the highest level for like, what, 15 years An esports competitor will play at the highest level for three, four, five tops. And is this going to be broadcastable? I've asked uh, our colleague and reporter... Alex Rated Rhodes. Alex Rated Rhodes. X-Rated. I can't believe you write these scripts. He's going to be playing an adult-themed game, stick with me here, called Leisure Suit Larry. Oh, no. Wet dreams dry twice. Was the oh no in the title? Did you add that? I added that. Okay, so my options are drink a good whiskey, go out and enjoy a hot night, go out and get some fresh air. Let's go with drink a good whiskey. Drink a good whiskey. I'm going to need one of those myself soon. Dear Lord. This could be our last podcast, so uh, subscribe to us while it's still (laughs) available. (laughs) 
We're at Naked Gaming Pod on Twitter and Instagram now. Hooray, go and subscribe. Maybe to Twitter, actually, so that I No, will. Instagram. Okay. So much gaming news this month. Here's Lee Milner with The Lowdown. I don't know what a lowdown is, but anyway, here it is. Cyberpunk 2077 has been delayed again. Yeah, again. The developer CD Projekt Red says the latest delay has been caused by issues with the game's current generation console builds. It's coming out on the 10th of December now, apparently. You blowing up all over the news. Fans of Roblox are distraught as the oof sound that accompanies the death of characters has now been removed. Now you have to pay a pound for it and the developer who originally created the sound for a game released 20 years ago will get compensation. We obviously can't use their oof because we're tight. So here's Chris now with his impression. Oof. Nintendo has seen its profits triple in the six months leading up to September. The firm made $2 billion as coronavirus lockdowns increased demand for its products. Video games like Animal Crossing have helped increase sales. And finally, PlayStation has paid to have its iconic square, circle, X and triangle symbols put above Oxford Circus and other underground stations in London. And they look fabulous. <laughs> Top news. Nap time now. Stop kidding around. Snake? Snake! The PlayStation 5 has arrived. Did you get one, Chris? No, I didn't get one. No. Would you like to tell everybody what happened on the 19th? You, you tell a story. You, you lived it. So I woke up at five minutes to eight because John Lewis was supposed to have PlayStations in stock at eight. Mm. So I logged in and I couldn't get one there. And then Curry's was supposed to have stock. So I logged into Curry's and they, the website crashed for hours and they said, sorry, actually, we're not releasing any stock today. Then I went on to Game and the, their website crashed. And then I moved on to Amazon. And instead of the stock coming out at midday, it came out at one o'clock and then it, it all sold within two minutes. So no, I haven't got a PlayStation You're not 5. bitter at all about any of that, are you? I think it's been a great release. <laughs> now a study came out a few days ago from oxford university saying that video games are good for your well-being the good news mm. the longing... I, always, I always knew it <laughs> why because you play so much and yeah you're so happy. i'm so happy apparently the longer you play the happier players reported feeling there you are they specifically looked at animal crossing new horizons which is a game we've reviewed before and zombies versus plants the battle for Neighbourville. And you've been speaking to Professor Andrew Shibilski, an experimental psychologist and director of research at the Oxford Internet Institute, who authored the study. Well, I mean, in a funny kind of way, this is definitely the kind of study that should have probably been done, you know, 10, 20 or 30 years ago. Um, I, social scientists tend to fall back when they can on asking questions uh, of their participants, you know, whether you're interested in aggression or addiction uh, or, or maybe even the positive benefits of, of play, we haven't really bothered to directly measure the behavior of, of players themselves. Do you believe that the fact that there's a positive trend now in that people are gaming for longer and, and I suppose reporting feeling happier, that, that has anything to do with this year and lockdown and pandemics and people being more disconnected this year? Yeah, it, it, it might. And it, it also might have something to do with the fact that we only looked at two games out of, you know, a few million uh, that are out there in the wild. And, and the games that we looked at, we looked at, at them specifically because they were social, uh, they had a social component to them, and they were internet connected. So there's probably a, a question about how much these findings would generalize, you know, whether or not it would just be uh, uh, all a mess when it comes to the amount of time people play games and their well-being. But really, uh, th this is why more research of, of a higher quality is needed. What would you like to see uh, done next in, in regards to research in this field? Because it seems like, as you suggest, that there's a longer way to go. Well, the key thing here is that, you know, Nintendo of America and, and EA, they really stuck their necks out. You know, that tiny positive correlation we found uh, between playtime and, and well-being, that could have easily gone in the other direction. <laughs> and then they would have been facing a lot of really bad press. Um, and so I think it's, a, it, it's, it's, and they didn't know what the results were. I, I, I should actually make that very clear. Um, we, we collected the data in such a way that, that for the surveys of people's well-being, we, we collected and stored that here at Oxford. And, and they had data on telemetry, but we're the ones who kind of married it together. 
uh, with with a unique identifier, so that the games companies couldn't control the results, or you know they, they couldn't exert control. Not that they wanted to, obviously, but um, but no. The, the the big next step, obviously, is is involving more companies and following a larger, more representative sample of of players uh, over time. And was this small positive correlation big enough? to get excited about because obviously everyone is getting excited about it but in your opinion do you think it's enough to go on no you, your parents shouldn't be going out buying consoles on the basis of it uh and and it it, it really it really should be a, a very strong cautionary note uh for, for for my colleagues in other areas of, of psychology who would go on to say uh to make very strong unsubstantiated claims about the negative effects how interesting is that? Thank you, Professor Andy Shabilsky, who goes by Andrew Shabilsky online. He's really trying to change the way this kind of research around gaming is done because a lot of studies are negative. Mm-hmm. And he was kind of saying, well, look, if you look at such a specific small area, mm. you can find positive in any, anything you like. So Definitely. more research needs to be done. This is the Naked Gaming Podcast with Chris Barrow and Lee Milner. Time for some new releases now. This is my favourite thing to do, just play all the new games. Yeah, first things first, the PS5 has just come out. And if you're lucky enough to have managed to get one, then, well, good on you. Yeah, I'm not really that happy for you. We're not bitter at all. (laughs) Don't worry about it. Uh, The Xbox Series X is also here. Um, My favourite thing about the Xbox Series X is that people have discovered that the fan on top of it is so powerful that you can float a ping pong ball on it. Oh dear. That is what the technology's for. What I don't understand is that I thought as technology kind of, you know, went along, you, they get better and better. So smaller, more compact, quieter. There's this, is it Moore's law or some law of computing and basically computer chips and thing, it's supposed to double in power and halve in size right. so every what happened, couple of years. So what happened here then? <laughs> well, forgot, and also with the PS5. They forgot about the size thing, didn't they? So let's look at some of those new games then. Uh, where do you want to start? Uh, so let's talk about Assassin's Creed Valhalla. <laughs> So Assassin's Creed is one of the biggest series of games. It's a proper launch title for the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series Mm -hmm. X. So it was Mm -hmm. designed with those systems in mind, although you can play it on the PS4 uh, and the Xbox One as well. Um, I think it's a really terrible game. I'm really sorry to say, but... It's had so much hype. In previous Assassin's Creeds, you would climb on top of buildings, sneak around... And then the ultimate mission would be to stealthily assassinate, hence Mm. the name, some kind of evil character and then try and escape and run away. Mm -hmm. In this game, because it's Valhalla, they haven't really got skyscraping buildings and huge tall towers and stuff. There's a few buildings, but they're like barns and, and things like that. So you can't really climb up the amazing landscape and architecture of a, a gothic building because they've set it in Viking times. I see. I think that's the the overriding problem here. So Instead of having that excitement, this has become a bit of a hack and slasher kind of game. Um, also, the voice acting is absolutely shocking. Are you, what are you hinting at? Something I've recorded. Yeah. Have a listen to this. Is that not something you worry over? I worry only that our king will not see that I'm right until it's too late. What about Sigurd? What would he say? If Sigurd were here, he would be sitting beside you, wiping the blood from his axe and smiling into the breeze. I don't know what accent that's supposed to be, but it's not. Doesn't remind me of kind of Norse gods or anything like that. No. Do you think you could do better? No, but oh, I'm right. not a voice actor. <laughs> oh, actually, I am sometimes. Anyway, uh, the load times are relatively long. Okay, I'm a bit understanding because it's one of the first uh, next generation releases, but ultimately, you don't get to assassinate people. In fact, you couldn't assassinate anybody in the amount of time that I played the game for about two hours. So, what would you give it? It's out a of 10? It, it's a four out of ten. I, I really. Hang on, how can you give it a four if you can't even do what it says in the title? Because if you like hack and slashing and you want any kind of game to play on the next generation, it is a game. Oh right, okay. Well, <laughs> and that's think, the criteria. For I more. think you've been pretty um, well nice there with okay. the with your score. Oh. oh. More gaming releases to mention. Uh, Control, by the way, you know one of our favourite games? Yeah. It's just come out on the Nintendo Switch. Ah. And it's weird because you sort of stream it through the cloud, so you don't actually download it. You play like a bit like Google Stadia. Oh, yeah. There's a game running somewhere and you're kind of hooking into it. I don't know how it. I feel about that. Well, it was, a bit, it was a little bit laggy, to be honest with you. It was a bit slow to run. Uh, Pokemon, the DLC's out finally, the Crown Tundra. Oh, okay. Uh, and also, Crash Bandicoot 4, your favourite game, you have to collect masks. Yes. Which is awkward in coronavirus times. <laughs> Slightly. 
Slightly. Anyway, what would you want to look at next? Let's go with Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity. The history of the royal family of Hyrule is also the history of Calamity Ganon, a primal evil that has endured over the ages. So this is the origin story of Zelda Breath of the Wild, Mm -hmm. Hyrule Warriors, uh, Age of Calamity. It's basically the huge fight that took place 100 years before. So everyone was super excited to see, well, basically what the story is and, and to see it unfold. The graphics are awesome. Mm-hmm. The graphics are exactly like Zelda Breath of the Wild, that cartoony style, which you saw a bit yeah. of it when I was playing it, actually. Um, it's very like a game called Dynasty Warriors, which you may or may not have played, but you've got hundreds of people running at you, and then you hack and slash them to death. Okay. So it is, it's basically Dynasty Warriors, but with the Zelda Breath of the Wild graphics. Mm. Now, I bet it's beautiful. It is beautiful. It runs really smoothly. I was a bit worried because a lot of people were saying in the demo version it was very jittery and laggy and I thought oh I don't even I don't really want to play the demo but they sorted out all the problems do you Super think sometimes smooth. the demo puts people off it put unfairly. me off it put me off to be honest with you I thought mm, I don't know if I'm that excited for this game but it's really good it feels a bit like a money maker okay we really just wanted Breath of the Wild 2 mm. rather than this but it's okay it's a different studio it's a real technological achievement uh I don't know how fun it is though Hacking and slashing for me really gets old after a while. You get a lot of new characters, you get a lot of different bad guys to hack and slash at. There is story there. It's a kind of, I'd say it's a 7 out of 10, but if you really love Dynasty Warriors, then it's an 8 out of 10. So is it quite repetitive? It can, it, it can become repetitive. You get a lot of moves, but it's like any other hack and slasher. Well, you can get Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity on Nintendo Switch for £50, and there's a free demo available online too. Busy night, but there's always room for another. Spider-Man Miles Morales is out now, and it's one of the launch games for the PS5. Go be a hero, Miles. Okay, let's do this. You can also get it on PlayStation 4. Uh, you had a go at this, actually, last night. Yeah, man. It was awesome. It's really good. It's awesome. really good. I haven't played that much of the first Spider-Man. No, I know. Um, the last one on the PlayStation 4, because I'm yeah. kind of saving it. Because yeah. you know when a game is so good? Yeah. Um, it's like a treat for me once yeah. I've got through the one, other ones that I'm trying to complete. This one is like the next Super level good, isn't it? of that. Now, you managed to get the hang of swinging around the city really quickly. Yeah, so I think um, the swinging part of it is super easy. You'll get that within like literally a couple of minutes. Um, then I, we were learning how to... Um, you did the to, combat to, challenges. To, yes, and, and a little bit tricky for me, but it, fairly simple, isn't it? There's a lot of moves thrown at you very, very quickly. So the way that your fighting works, if you ever played a Batman, Arkham Asylum or Arkham City or any of those games, Mm. um, it's got a very similar combat style, very slick, smooth, you know, you try and chain your combinations together of attacks and it's a very fair system. So there's a little warning light that comes up if someone's about to shoot at you Mm -hmm, as mm Spider-Man, you can dodge that and then that gives you your combo continues and you can get multipliers 15 times combo. Um, really, really smooth, but there's so many moves. It was like so pr- press L1, circle and triangle together. And you were thinking, okay, I've just learned that. And it says, press this button and you fire webs at them. Okay, I remember that. Press this button. It's just, is, there yeah. is a lot. I agree with you. There's quite a lot, but I think after after a few hours so playing this, you'll get, you'll get used to it. And it's pretty cool. You can disarm people and use your spider web to kind of rip the, the yeah. guns out of their hands. And then you can throw them in the air and it's really cool. So you are Miles Morales, obviously, uh, who is uh, a wingman to Peter Parker, who's obviously the Spider-Man that most people know and love. Uh, it's the same universe as the film Spider-Verse. Mm-hmm. So if you saw that film, this is the same lead character. Then Peter Parker, who's been your bro mm-hmm. early on, he's sort of taught you the ways. Yeah. Off he goes for two weeks. I know. And you Bye. are you are Spider-Man. Yeah. Now, you feel like a superhero, don't you? Yes. And what's weird about this game is that I'm not really into the kind of superhero mm. games, the Marvels. Like that Avengers, sort of, you didn't No, really, I'm, no. Not, I'm not really bothered about it. But actually, playing this game, you don't have to be interested in superheroes. It's just a really cool game. It's exactly like the last game, but another level up, I would yeah. say. Yeah. Graphics are awesome. I would say 9 out of 10 so far. I'm yeah. absolutely loving it. Yeah. Also, I didn't know that Spider-Man has a dash in it. Did you know that? Spider, what? Spider, Dash, Man. Really? 
So I'd just say that's one word. Spider Dash Man Miles Morales is out now for PlayStation 4 and 5 for 50 quid. Power up. Here it comes. Mario Kart Live Home Circuit, another game with a colon in the title, uh, that we actually decided to make a video review of this month, yeah. which is really cool. Uh, you can check it out now on our Twitter page at Naked Gaming Pod, or we're on Instagram, of course. Woohoo! Here's just a flavour of what you can expect. So, what's in the box? You get Mario. A charger cable. One, two, three, four gates to drive through, and a couple of arrow pointer signs. First things first, you have to charge your cart. So, plug Mario into the wall. Just bear in mind, the cable isn't that long. So, start up the game on your Switch, connect to your cart, and you're ready to go. The first thing you have to do is set up your course. Bailey, get out the way! Then, in the game, you drive round a lap to mark out your route with pink paint on your tyres. Now you're ready to race. The game uses something called altered reality, so you can see your living room, but with other racers going round the track. And the racing is a lot of fun. Meow. Meow. So Mario's been <laughs> racing, uh, we've been racing, and it was actually quite a lot of fun. It's really good. But there's one huge problem. Huge problem. Huge. You can't play two-player unless you uh -uh. buy another Mario or Luigi and another Nintendo Switch and then connect them together. So that's yeah. the only way you can make it work with two people. That's a huge amount it's of pretty money. pretty pricey. So. But, but I've got to say, it was really fun. It was really, really fun. Um, being able to kind of race through your living room, your kitchen, um, and it's really weird when you're playing and you can see out of the corner of your eye, the cart go past. That's really, really cool. And the rabbit go past. And the rabbit. <laughs> now, the only thing though, you got to make sure that you've either got wood flooring mm. or really, really thin carpet, yeah. possibly even outside. But when it comes to thick carpet, yeah. it's not gonna really go, go well. So just bear that in mind when you do get this. What would you give it out of 10? Seven out of 10 because of the price, but it was surprisingly good actually, the altered reality and, and the effects were super cool. Um, the only other thing that I would say is that price wise, you know how much it is, what would you say? Yeah, so this is around a hundred pounds, so it's not cheap, but it is pretty, pretty cool. It's good, isn't it? It's surprising. I mean, expensive, as we said, Yeah. but Good. We're also going to do a video next month for our Christmas special. Mm. So I'm going to have to do my hair. <laughs> oh, sorry, you're going to have to do my hair. <laughs> uh, so watch this space for next month. It'll go up on YouTube. But uh, our video of Mario Kart Live Home Circuit, the review is there right now. This is the Naked Gaming Podcast with Chris Barrow and Lee Milner. Next up, Chris has been speaking to the founder of the eSports team, G2, about all things gaming, including what it's like running a team at the moment during the coronavirus pandemic. This is Carlos Rodriguez, also known as Ocelot. Just tell me a bit about running your team during this time and what's been different, I suppose, this year compared to the last few years, because so much must have changed for you. Uh, in video games and video game competition, it all started digital, so... What's going on, you know, most of us are used to this and uh, most of us, uh, you know, grew playing, competing in tournaments online. So it really falls into place uh, quite nicely, actually. It feels very natural. G2 itself, it's one of the huge players, one of the biggest esports teams that there is. I mean, I've been watching esports for a long time and I've already been you know, aware of G2's impact. What are some of the games that you find the, the biggest and the best for you to be involved in? Because there's so many different and new games coming out all the time. You've got to keep on top of that, you know. Yeah, it's, you know, it's part of our job to, number one, understanding, you know, where uh, this this whole thing is going, you know, uh, what people like. Uh, it's, it's a part of our job to understand what people like to watch in, as, you know, in terms of movies, what people is, is mm. craving for. And we sort of digest all that information and we sort of automatically understand uh, which game is going to be relevant tomorrow, right? So sure. people are looking more towards, you know, maybe battle royales or something because they want to feel that sense of accomplishment of being the number one mm -hmm. out of a hundred people, for example. Uh, well, we, I think we already went through that, and I feel like things are slowly shifting again, right? What's your number one game in terms of uh, League of Legends? It's League not even Legends. close. Like League of Legends is the largest video game on the planet. Period. Nothing gets close. 
Uh, not FIFA, not Call of Duty, nothing gets close. And why, why do you think that is? Is it because it's been around? Because it's been around for quite a while, hasn't it? Yeah, it's part, of, it's part of the reason, right? It's been around for 10 plus years. And if I log into the game right now, I still see people that 10 years ago played 10 hours a day, still playing 10 hours a day today. So wow. it, has the, it has the learning curve that allows for new players to want to come by, new mm. players to want to play the game. And it has that depth to ensure that hardcore players stick around for many years. And that's the formula every publisher is trying to hit, right? And that I think only a few have been able to hit. And the players themselves as well, and I'm talking about players who are uh, part of the team, I view them as the same as you might view like a professional boxer, for example. They have a certain skill set. You can put them in head-to-heads against other individuals or big teams as well. I mean, the prize money is absolutely huge nowadays. You're talking millions and millions of dollars. People, again, who aren't quite into esports, they might look at it and go, whoa, this is, this is a huge industry. Like, it, that must be a great thing to be able to tap into for you because there's all this money on offer kind of thing. As a matter of fact, prize money only um, accounts for, even in a, with a super successful team like ours, like we, you can argue uh, that we are the number one esports team in terms of competition in the world right now. Mm-hmm. And competitive success, and our prize money revenue um, is accounts for less than ten percent of the overall revenue. Oh, really? Like way less. Yeah, way less. It's probably like six percent of the overall revenue. Really? So that goes to show how much business there is behind, um, you know, this venture. And it's just there's below the line sponsorship deals. There's media rights. Uh, there is, uh, you know, the broadcasting rights, there is, you know, live stream deal rights and things of that nature. Over the last 16, 17 years, whatever, you can't just always keep the same players. The players have a huge draw from their fans and you want that hooked into the team as well. Is that quite straightforward process or is it quite complicated with contracts and stuff? I think most of the talent related challenges that a football goes through, esports does not go through. Really? Um, yeah, and I'll explain you why. Of course, there's still, you know, the transfer windows. There's still, you know, you name it. Slatan Ibrahimovic has been playing at the highest level for longer than I can remember. Uh, Cristiano Ronaldo has been playing at the highest level for like, what, 14 years? Yeah, exactly. 15 years. An esports competitor will play at the highest level for three, four, five tops. On top of that, games might come and go. Yeah. If the game happens to be relevant and if the guy happens to remain relevant in those years, it's still only three, four, five years of top, top, top gameplay, right? Which, yeah, it, it, it leads him to have a huge fan base following. But at the end of the day, it's nowhere comparable with any of the traditional sport stars. Thanks to Carlos Rodriguez, founder of the esports team G2. And you can listen to a longer version of that interview. Just search for The Naked Scientist in short special editions podcast and download it there. This is The Naked Gaming Podcast. No singing. With Chris Barrow and Lee Milner. Very Hello. good, very good. I almost made a song there. <laughs> almost, how dare you. I got a music degree. <laughs> now, in conjunction... <laughs> 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 You're like, moving on. OK. In conjunction with the 35th anniversary of Super Mario... Is it bros? I think it's bros. Brothers, bros. bros. You'd Actually, say bros. It's not bros, I know OK, that. I'll stick with bros then. <laughs> Amazon has been sending out packages with Mario-themed cardboard boxes. And also, there's this thing called the Game and Watch Super Mario Bros. bros. <laughs> so, uh, so I've got it here. So we were sent this by Nintendo, and it's called... Well, is, is it actually called the Game & Watch? Hang on. It's called um, Game & Watch Ball Nintendo. Ball? Yeah. Oh, well, there you go. I don't know why it's called Ball. <laughs> it's it's not, it does look like a ball. Are you opening it up now? Yeah. Okay, good luck. So this is a very small... It looks like the old... Did you ever have a pager? It looks no. a little bit like an old pager. Who? Type. I know. Oh. It says it's a watch. Yeah. This doesn't go on my wrist. <laughs> it's about the size of, um, well, it's literally the size of my hand. Okay. And you can play games in it, which you can hear at the moment. What games have you got as the options? Well, it's the it's the old school Mario that you know you used to play on. Oh, I'm not, obviously not very good at. <laughs> you um, just died twice. <laughs> 
talking and playing games isn't my forte. So basically, it's like the old school Mario that used to play. And then when you're bored of playing, you can just literally press time. And look at that. Look on the screen. 12.22. And is that, that's it then? And that's it. So what are the three... It's got more than one game, hasn't it, surely? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What are the three games? Super Mario 1, 2, and then Ball. That's Super why it's Mario called Ball. Ball. Oh. I used to play this on the Game Boy. Now... Oh, it's like juggling. Right. It's literally like juggling, and you have to... I mean, listen to this. So the balls are... So the balls are flying in the air, and you have to juggle them. To move and your you're hands. you're Mario, and you're moving the hands. Yeah, and you've got to get a top score of how many balls you can keep in the air the longest amount of time so that's a really 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 retro game that's quite cool though it's all right i mean how many times do you want to play that i mean you're bored now already i'm really bored so then you can switch you can go on to super mario number two look and you're in there so i don't understand why on earth it's called a watch i mean you could call it a clock but you can't call it a watch because a watch, I think, by definition, has to strap to your wrist. You've just no. dropped. Well, I tried to put it on my wrist. And it fell. <laughs> 50 pounds that cost, apparently. 50 quid? For yeah. that? Yeah. I mean, you've been ripped off, mate, if you've just bought that for 50 quid. If it was free, though, would you have it? Yes. For a Christmas stocking filler? For a Christmas stocking filler, that is perfect. Okay. What I'd use this for is for kids in the back of the car for yeah. long journeys. It would work a treat. You can play Super Mario 1, 2 and ball if you really want to. <laughs> but why wouldn't you just put that 50 quid towards a Nintendo Switch? That's what I don't understand. Well, that's it. Well, I'm putting this back in the box now. Okay, well, luckily, luckily, for the first time ever, we're going to do a giveaway on the Naked Gaming are Podcast. We? Here we are. If you want to get it, just head to Twitter. All you have to do is follow us there, retweet our post about Super Mario Watch Ball, whatever it's called, uh, and we'll enter you into the giveaway. And uh, yeah, we'll announce the winner in the next edition of the podcast. That's exciting. Right, it's all packaged up, ready to go. This is the Naked Gaming Podcast with Chris Barrow and Lee Milner. Time for our Simulator of the Month. And thank goodness that this is a podcast. I'm sure that we couldn't firstly do a video version of this. I can't and, believe. And I can't s- believe we're doing this. It definitely wouldn't get on the radio either. No, no. Uh, there's a game series called Leisure Suit Larry, oh, no. where you play as a sleazy uh, guy. It's a point and click adventure, a bit like uh, Monkey Island, yep. which is a lot of people's favourite. It's it's kind of unbelievable that they're they're even still making games like this. To be honest, I find it it's crazy, isn't it? Um, this is my attempt at editing the trailer of the game so that it's uh, acceptable for us to play. Oh, Faith, I wish you were here. Your location and an encrypted backup of your entire Pi phone, including private data, are being sent to Larry Laffer. Larry? Yes? Let the delivery guys in. That's not the doorbell. The signal's coming from Faith's Pi phone. So what's this one called? Leisure Suit Larry? No! Wet Dreams Dry Twice, which is the sequel. How did you... Hang on a minute. I got a free copy. It's sent to me. Right. I didn't request it. <laughs> right. I'm subscribed to their mailing list. Uh, <laughs> so what did you call him earlier? Alex, a- a- Alex Al- Rated Roads. Alex Rated Roads. Wow. Alex Rated Roads uh, has sent us <clears throat> this report. Hello, Chris and Lee. It's Alex here. Back this month for another game review. And I can't quite believe I'm doing this one. Leisure Suit Larry. Wet Dreams Dry Twice. What an awful name. Uh, If you're not familiar with Leisure Suit Larry, this is a game series that started back in the 1980s. And the appeal was, well, basically it was a lot harder to find um, naked pictures of women on the internet back then. Uh, So you had to play stuff like this. So let's give it a go. It's a point and click. Uh, I've already started. um, There is a load of sort of backstory. um, Oh, here we go. I was just thinking about Faith again. Don't blame yourself. I do, though. Yeah, there's a load of backstory. So um, Faith, I think, was uh, someone he fell in love with at the end of the get- last game uh, called Wet Dreams Never Dry. Also, gross. Um, it's quite difficult to know what's going on. Right, OK, so it's a point and click. Click them with the right mouse to examine them. Okey dokey. So, how many genders are there? Ooh, this is going to get controversial, isn't it? Right, let's have a look. So my options are enough for everyone, two are enough for me, with me, just one, but it's in XL. And, okay, so let's go with... Not for everyone. I've almost had enough myself. The correct answer is 
Gender is diverse. Next question. Your best friend confides that he is suffering from depression. What do you advise him to do? Okay, so my options are drink a good whiskey, go out and enjoy a hot night, go out and get some fresh air. Let's go with drink a good whiskey. Drink a good whiskey. I'm going to need one of those myself soon. And that's what you would do yourself? No, of course not. That's reassuring. First, I get myself a whiskey. Then find a woman. Enough already. Why do I even ask? At least it's very aware uh, that, you know, the stuff it used to get away with probably ain't going to fly these days. Right, OK, wedding preparations. El Ray, who's the chief of the village, uh, can't play any wedding music without a new guitar string. The catering for the wedding. The catering for the wedding is still not sorted. Larry's wedding suit. I can't. I need to, to get hold of my wedding suit. It's currently sort of caged behind a padlock, so I need the key there. Right, OK, let's get going. If you hold the space bar button, it, it kind of it illuminates everything that you can click on. That's a little uh, bit of a shame, really, because it should be a bit harder, I think. Tube of lubricant. Lovely. He's put that in his pocket. I think you're probably getting the general vibe of this game by now, if you've never uh, played it before. You know, um, playing games like Mario, I would say, it's like meeting an old friend, you know? It's like... Uh, uh, you haven't seen each other in ages, but yeah, you immediately sort of click again and you're like, oh, yes, I remember where I like this person. Uh, meeting uh, Leisure Suit Larry again is like bumping into your creepy uncle who just got out of prison. Uh, OK, what's this? Volleyball. There's a hole in it, so I can guess what joke's coming here. It looks a little limp, but I can fix that. Hey, that's what your women usually say to you. hi oh. Thanks, Alex. I think we just... It's getting a bit awkward, isn't Should it? Should we just leave it there? It's getting really awkward. Uh, yeah. That game is out now for a... <laughs> no. <this laughs> How could it be 30? Did say 31 quid? Th 31 pounds? Good luck, everybody. No. Yeah. It's a bit of a shame, really, because it should be a bit harder, I think. All sorts of people are getting involved and helping out in the battle against coronavirus. But now there's a new group who've joined the fight, Gamers in EVE Online. Eva Higginbotham has been finding out more. Eve is a difficult game to describe. You can be a space pirate that goes around stealing or killing other capsuleers in the game. You could be someone who does industry where you look at the markets or you mine your own materials and then you build stuff for other players to use, other players to go blow up, or even yourself. That's Jesse an avid player of a game called EVE Online. While you're absentmindedly mining for resources or waiting to go through a wormhole, there's a new activity to get your teeth stuck into, analysing data from studies on coronavirus as a part of Project Discovery. Ryan Brinkman explains. The first and probably the most important thing is we're trying to help scientists in the fight against COVID. So one of the technologies that's being widely used is flow cytometry. What we use photometry for is look at the different cells that are present in our blood, the white blood cells, that are used to both detect infection and to fight infection. We uh, take a sample of a patient's blood and we label the cells so that they glow with light when they run past the laser one by one. What we label these cells is on proteins on the cell surface that we know define the function of these cells. These protein markers act as signposts to scientists, telling them what kind of cells are present in a patient's blood. This is important because when your body mounts an immune response to something, a lot of different types of white blood cells get involved. And understanding which immune cells are prevalent, and in what proportions, tells scientists loads of information about how a patient is responding to an infection, like coronavirus, or a treatment. Scientists can now label up to 50 different proteins on the surface of these cells at the same time. So what Ryan and his team have done is broken down the 50-dimensional data into lots of two-dimensional puzzles, and that's where EVE Online comes in. These 2D puzzles are prettied up and uploaded into the EVE Online world, where players can access them as a part of a mini-game, like a side project to the main business of hunting down enemy spaceships. And the more puzzles you solve, the better rewards you get within the game. That was Eva Higginbotham reporting on EVE. Big shout out to Dylan, by the way, who subscribed to the podcast and said it's helping during lockdown. Whoop, whoop. Thank you so 
so much. Rob on Twitter as well commented about Mario Kart Live Home Circuit, oh. uh, saying he enjoyed the video that we made a lot, actually. Just wondering how long the fun will last yeah, for, though. Yeah, that's what I said. And kids are quite faddy, says yeah. Rob. So will they be interested? I think that was your main concern, actually. I think, I think the kids will play it probably a couple of times and then get bored of it. I don't, I don't know. Maybe, I, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I just, I'm wrong. I think, I, you're, I think you're absolutely right. And it, you know, he says, "Is it a hundred pounds worth of fun? Like, could you not just buy ten films from the from?" Well, I think was, if it was just a bit cheaper, just even you know seventy quid. Yeah. make a huge difference just before we go we made a very quick guide by the way uh, for the University of Lincoln on how to make a podcast oh yeah that was, really, that? that was really fun it was yeah, good really fun good. wasn't it there's a video of that on our Twitter page and did it go on Instagram no but it will do today <laughs> <laughs> look it's new alright okay uh, so here's five of the uh, best top tips for podcasting number one the most important thing is what do you want to talk about? Why should people listen to your podcast? If you're just talking to a friend about absolute rubbish, why would they listen? I would say make sure you know your subject as well, because if you're passionate about something like gaming, which we are, then it's very likely that that passion will come across. Uh, if you're making a politics podcast, but you don't really care about politics, it's going to sound forced, whereas you kind of just need to have a certain level of background information there just really get involved in the topic that you choose. And I would say try and choose a specific topic. Sometimes the more niche podcasts are actually the most successful. Three, make sure you have the right equipment and editing software to make your podcast. We use our home studio, which looks a little bit like this. And yes, we do record everything in our living room because, hey, it's a podcast. You can record a podcast anywhere you like. That's why Bailey the Bunny often gets a mention because he's always interrupting us. But if you haven't got a home studio like this one, don't worry because your phones are just as good. You can record everything on these. You can even download some free editing software. Just make sure your phone actually works, unlike mine. I think the other mistake that people make is it's not the same as radio at all. So it's not as formal. In fact, it's almost like you're eavesdropping in on a conversation with a podcast. So what we try and do is have a lot of unscripted stuff. Uh, but then again, you can always edit it quite heavily. So if you say something that you'd rather not be in there, it's very easy to do. Like, for example, see, I edited that out. You'll never know what I was going to say. And finally just be yourself all right you can't be anybody else in a podcast just be yourself enjoy it and have lots of fun well that's it thanks for listening subscribe get on, on the instagram on the instas on the insta it's been a really full show I know, loads going on. Uh, thanks to all of our guests for making the time. In fact, it was funny because um, Professor Andy, who mm. we were speaking to about the gaming research, yeah, uh, he was walking about with some of his colleagues at, at three metres distance, he told me. Okay. And they had to walk behind him for the whole interview. Oh, <laughs> oh I can imagine how that, how that looked. Oh, oh. Well, well, thank you so much to everybody who gets involved mm. uh, in the podcast. We what love you, hearing from you as what well. What are you excited about? I need to know what you're most excited about in the run-up to Christmas now when it comes to gaming. We've just found out that we've got an Xbox Series X on the way, which is yeah. moderately exciting. I'll let you know how that goes uh, in our Christmas special. I mean, special. I was looking forward to getting the PS5, but you failed, so it's fine. Well, I spent um, five hours trying to get fine. one, didn't I? So. Um, when did we say... Just for I know we're running out of time, but um, when did we say that um, Little Nightmares two was February. coming out? February. Oh, I've still got a long way to wait for that. Twenty first of Feb. That's, oh God. So, so what you're listening, looking forward to in the run up to Christmas is Little Nightmares being out closer, as in us getting closer in time towards February when yes, you can, and that's yes, it. <laughs> time actual time to play a bit more of Crash because we haven't played Crash, Crash enough. Crash Bandicoot four. Um, Ori as well. Yeah, they're going to get you the other Ori as well. Yeah, so yeah. So you're going to enjoy that. Yeah, what about you? Uh, I want the PlayStation 5, really. A bit sad about that. Uh, I'm looking forward to playing Zelda uh, Hyrule Warriors and Breath of the Wild and doing, going through them all. How did I miss Cyberpunk 2077? Well, the reason I can't get excited by Cyberpunk was because it's supposed to come out earlier this year in April. So yeah, no. I know it's out on December the 10th for now. That's exciting, though. But I, do, I just don't truly believe that it's coming out on December the 10th just yet. But anyway, if it does, we'll have it in the next edition of the podcast. And if you want to get hold of that Mario watch with a colour screen, Game & Watch and everything, 
you're going to wrap. Are you going to wrap it? Because your wrapping's neater than mine. Yeah, go on then. I'll wrap it. Okay. I'll wrap it up. I'll get the first class stamps. How many do you think we'll need for this? Depends who we're sending it to. to be Quite a few. Right, I'm on with it. Thanks very much to Chris Barrow and to Lee Milner. And if you'd like to sign up for their programme, The Naked Gaming Podcast, just look up the title in any podcast catalogue. It should be there. Or go to nakedscientist.com slash gaming. Top right of the screen, subscribe links, tells you how to do it there too. And if you like what we do here at The Naked Scientist, do please consider becoming either a regular or a one-off donor to support what we do and keep our programmes on air. Details of how you can do that, nakedscientist.com slash donate.